The first album you actually recorded in Iowa itself. Yeah, yeah. And how did that affect things? That was awesome. Did you bring your kids into the studio at any point? I brought my daughter. Yeah, I brought my daughter down there. We were actually getting fitted for uh, the new outfits and yeah. stuff. And uh, I brought her down and she was like, she was like looking around and she's like, what's this do? And I was like, well, this is the vocal booth and blah, 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 blah. And she's like, what's that? And I was like, oh, that's my bucket that I throw up in. Don't look at that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty gross. Is it almost a case of like when you go and do Slipknot, you become Slipknot. It's like Batman putting on his mask and you've got to separate that from your personal life. Or can you do... Can you merge both? Uh, a little bit. I mean, there there are definitely more and more elements coming into to who I am when I do this. Um, but I think that just comes with maturity. That comes with, you know, kind of growing into your own skin you yeah. know, and kind of filling in the blanks. Um, suffice it to say, I mean, there's always going to be a part of me that is a little more wide open when I'm not in this. Yeah. But at the same time, there's always going to be a part of me that gets tapped into and is allowed to speak when I put this on, you know, yeah. which is, you know, a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people, you know, they pay a lot of money per hour for a, a therapist to be able to get that out of them. And for me, it's just, I get to go out and entertain thousands of people. So that's a therapy. I, I can, I can dig that. During the recording of Iowa, obviously the second album, um, there was a lot of uh, hatred from some members of the band to the other and, and a lot of yeah. bad feeling. Has that uh, dis dissolved? And now are you, are you more of a closely knit unit regardless of your violence? Well, I, I think we just, you know, we realize that we're, we're family, you know, yeah. I mean, there's an old adage, you, know, you don't get to pick your family. Well, in this case we did, you know, and, uh, I, I think when we were younger, we couldn't handle the fact that we were all so different. Yeah. You know, we, we kind of use that as excuses to, to, to fight against each other and to just not cohese as well. But now, especially for me, um, you know, we, you know, you know, it's coming up on 10 years uh, for us professionally since album, yeah, yeah since the first album dropped in 99 and uh i've realized that a lot of the problem that we had was we were treating each other with the exact same energy that we basically assumed yep. you know we we didn't we didn't stop and realize that we were all changing as people and we were all evolving as people and we were all maturing and growing up for the most part and uh for, so for me like at the start at the out start of this i really wanted to not only put out the vibe that i had changed and i had come a long way in my life but that i realized that everyone had changed you know and it took a while for everything to kind of to for everybody to figure that out you know because everybody was so used to just treating people as they remembered them and not as how they you know realize so and that's kind of that's basically what the song psychosocial is about is the fact that we had to let go of that energy and let go of that negativity and um and now we're in a really good spot man which is pretty pretty scary we're actually more dangerous now because we're all getting along it's it's uh it's pretty pretty exciting and there's more broken limbs and yes uh you know <laughs> 18 legs and three broken feet it's pretty sweet man how what come it's always legs and feet not arms and necks? because we just have a, a tendency well you got to remember Jim broke his wrist yeah. on, uh, you know, the last tour of the volume three cycle. And, uh, we've all had our, our little injuries over the years and you've all uh, got a tendency to keep breaking. Oh wrist. my God. Would somebody dock him for that terrible pun? That was <laughs> I'm a big pun fan. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, don't pick my pocket. That's okay. all I know. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Earlier I mentioned about the, uh, the crow they used to have oh, carried around in the jar. The sauce. That I heard from one of my more uh, gothy looking friends at school. <laughs> <laughs> what? Fair enough. Yes. You, yeah, you used to wear continue. the people equal shit hoodie yes. on the way yeah. home, and I thought it was slightly unsavory at the time, but oh. I grew into it. Oh, there's a you know there's a philosophy behind well, it. Well, he but... used to. Yeah. I'm, no, exactly. I'm not. I'm not trying to be a, a mom. Yeah, as you would say. Yeah, maybe. Uh, he told he told me about how you had a crow, a dead crow in a jar, and you used to inhale its fumes and then vomit in your own mouth. Oh yeah, yeah. That, yeah. It was pretty. It was pretty vile. Is the little crow still around? No, no. Uh, the the crow kind of turned to sauce, 
which is probably why it was so gross in the first place. Um, but it was, uh, it was, un, it was, uh, uh, kind of ceremoniously buried in, uh, the, uh, floor of the old bar that, uh, Clown used to own. <laughs> <laughs> old school, <laughs> 